I'm Kate Marzullo. I'm the writer director of Phoenix Song. And I'm Kristen West. I'm the producer of Phoenix Song and part of the dynamic duo of Phoenix Song with Katie here. I actually, when I was growing up, I actually wanted to be an actress when I was growing up. Um, that was my dream. That's what I went to college for. Um, unfortunately, they didn't cast me in anything, so I kind of had to find creative outlets elsewhere. Um, but it actually worked out in my favor in that I kind of discovered my interest in writing and directing. Um, and, f and discovered that directing was actually uh, very conducive to my personality. So um, <laughs> I fell into that pretty easily. So I wrote and directed some things in college. Um, and then once I graduated, um, I concentrated on writing. And then once I moved out here, I went to film school where I majored in directing. Um, and so that I just figured there's so much more of a creative depth in directing for me. Um, just the idea of having the idea and then pursuing it and then bringing it to life is there's just such a creative thrill in that for me. Um, so even though I do still have kind of like that itch to act every once in a while, um, directing is, is who I am. That's what I do. I was the actress in my small town in Texas. I was on the bus every every spring going to one act theater competitions. I was Miss I was Miss Drama Queen and um, I grew up in this very small farming village in South Texas and I got to go to the big college at the University of Texas at Austin which had more people than my entire county. There were 50,000 students at UT. The population of the county I grew up in was like 48,000 at the time and they had a film school. And I didn't, I didn't feel like I wanted to major in theater, so I tried film. And then um, my junior year of college, I came and did the University of Texas LA um, semester in University of Texas semester in LA program. And I got the bug. I, I interned at the Disney lot, and I said, you know what? I want to live here. I want to do this. And that's how I got into all of this so very long ago. Those who know me best know where my <laughs> preferences lie. Um, I'm a huge fan of Hitchcock, specifically Psycho. Psycho is my favorite movie of all time. If I had a dime for every time somebody, you know, emailed me or texted me and was like, oh, you know, Psycho came on TV and I thought of you, I could fund my whole next feature film, for real. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I get a lot of my inspiration from those kind of techniques, but I also love directors who just kind of just ex do a lot of kind of experimental things. Like I really love um, P.T. Anderson. I love the movie Magnolia. I think it's brilliant. I love Milos Forman. I love him because he only does a movie like every 10 years, <laughs> but it's always brilliant, you know? So I kind of wonder, you know, if, if he doesn't do that because he just spends so much of his energy and of his of himself into his films that he's only got one in him every 10 years or so. Um, but it works and, you know, I'm thankful for it. Um, yeah, I, I, I just really respect people who kind of do things unexpected. And um, I also love directors who use music in their films. And that's probably why, one of the reasons why I love doing like music videos and stuff like that. Um, Phoenix Song is basically like a long form music video. Part of the reason being I hate shooting dialogue. Um, <laughs> but another reason is because, you know, I love music. Like music is like ingrained in me, but I can't do anything with it. I don't play any instruments. I only sing in my car when other people can't hear. So to do like music videos and other f films that have like a, like where music is kind of part of the character, like another set piece almost. Um, I love kind of exploring that because um, to me music is like the most visceral 
expression of somebody's feelings and emotions and everything. Um, so that's why I love to include that in my films and people who have seen my work, you know, can see that that's, you know, something I'm really into. I love Amadeus. I'm obsessed with that movie. Me I'm obsessed. Too, me yes. Too. And it, you know what it is about Amadeus is that it's the tension between genius and mediocrity and how they kind of rub up against each other. And that one little leap that takes you over that edge into, I hate myself and I hate the world and I hate you, God, and I'm going to burn a crucifix. Or it's, I, 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 I hate myself because of my talent and I can't express it. And I love it. I've watched that movie so many times. Oh my God. It has a great backstory too, because they were filming it in, um, Prague, Prague yeah. during the Iron Curtain. So they were like sneaking around in Prague. Yeah. During, during that time trying to film it. And the art direction's amazing. Yeah. The sound editing that amazing well the way, that's the, yeah. the amazing thing is they yeah. use mozart's music as the soundtrack right. which is brilliant yeah. because i mean he's brilliant anyway yeah but yeah i mean i was obsessed with that movie when i was right. 11 my my mm -hmm. mom can tell you i watched that movie every day right um i was obsessed with mozart and that was originally a play and yeah. see i love adaptation i love studying adaptation like i've read um a lot of people have seen the godfather movies but they've never read the godfather the book it has a very to me it has a very different tone in the book as opposed to the movie and that's just how i feel about it. but i love adaptation read all the harry potter watched the movie so that's kind of one of my things i yeah. like to do is kind of study adaptation um, definitely phoenix song was probably my best experience um as a director as a collaborative effort um the interesting thing about it was we knew going into it it was going to be ambitious but the funny thing was is all those elements that made it ambitious were a piece of cake. The costumes, the actors, all, I mean, there it's were- It's a period piece. Yeah. It's a period music video. How many, how many cast members? There's like 17 cast members. But um, they had to costume. Yeah. <laughs> and we, we, we cast, our casting sessions were amazing. Um, everybody we called back showed up, um, which I hear is a rarity. Um, but they were, they were just so excited and believed in the project so much that they couldn't wait to come back and be a part of it. Um, and the moment they were cast, there were no dropouts, there was no drama, there were no issues. They were all there on set, on time, when they were supposed to be, never complained about anything, and they just killed it. Um, and the costumes, we picked out the costumes before we had it cast. Um, for example, there's one character, she's from the 18th century and she's wearing this gorgeous like Rococo gown, um, which she had to. And there is only one gown like that at the costume place where we were looking. So we set it aside, we cast the role, we brought her in, it fit her perfectly. Like it was like, what? It was like miraculous. Synchronicity. Like, yeah, total for synchronicity. sure. And even the shoes we picked out for her, um, there was another character who was about like a hundred years beforehand in a Baroque gown. Again, there was only one gown like that in the costume shop, set it aside. She came in, she tried it on. It was a little big. However, that character has like an issue with being too thin. So the fact that it was actually kind of blousey on her worked for the character. So even when it wasn't perfect, it was still perfect. So, I mean, just things like that were just like amazing to me. Um, so in terms of an actual onset experience, because pre-production was just, it was, like I said, the casting and the costumes were a piece of cake. Everything else was just like every day. Um, six months of pre-production, but once we got on set, not a hitch. Um, so that was definitely, and I think a lot of that has to do with our preparation and the fact that we just surrounded ourselves with really great people, you know? Um, so as far as onset experiences, that's probably my favorite. I consider Phoenix Song probably one of the most important films I've been a part of as a producer. And um, I'm really happy with the success of it. We've been to several festivals. I'm really happy with the attention it's received. and and. Katie's a great planner. It's seamless. I mean, there's no, there's no T not cross, no die not odd, uh, dotted. It's all seamless. It's really great. And that's, that's been one of the best projects I've been a part of in a producing capacity. In an acting capacity, I have two, and they both happened in Texas. Um, in, um, in film, um, I was in Circus of the Dead this summer, which is Billy Pond's horror feature. And I have to say that production has a lot of heart. 
these people are making a film in Odessa, Texas, and they are making the best horror film ever, and they are in there and doing it, and everybody was so happy and so thrilled and so cheerful, and it really reinvigorated me because I, had, I hadn't been in Texas for a long period in a while, and um, they were just so happy to make a film, and sometimes when you're in L.A. and California, people are just, oh, we're making a film, oh my God, so... And Billy has this great attention to detail and, and directing people. And that was really fun as an actress to kind of come home and make a movie. It was great. And I have to mention this theater experience because it was kind of one of the craziest things I ever did in my life. <laughs> um, I did summer stock theater um, about four years ago. The University of Texas has the Shakespeare at Windale program. And you commit to living in this uh, town called Windale, Texas, which has like it's a, it's a ghost town, but the nearest town by it, Round Top, has 80 people. And you go and you live there on site, and you perform three Shakespearean plays, and you, you're there for three months. Yeah, and you're up at like 7 a.m. doing exercise, working your lines. And for me, I think that experience of doing the summer stock, and it's original practice of Shakespeare too, so you are, you are sewing your own costume. Yes, you are showing your own costume and you are, you are, and we went to London at the end of the tour, which was great. But um, it proved to me that I could, I had enough of a passion to really pursue this professionally and I loved doing that. And the plays we did that year were Richard II, Comedy of Errors, and Measure for Measure. And two of those I was cross-dressing. <laughs> so I was a boy. <laughs> But I really, you know, that toughened me up, I think, to go wake up at 7. And we went from 7 in the morning to, like, 9 o'clock at night rehearsing every day. It was crazy, but it was awesome. And that was my theater experience. When I was in drama school, I played the older character actor, so I was always putting artificial gray in my hair. <laughs> when I was in summer stock, they were changing me to a man. Um, I get sent out to be the mom. I get sent out to be... Um, uh, the cop in Billy Pond's film, I was a cop. I want to be the politician. I want to be young Hillary Clinton. I am dying for that. Because I grew up very, very politically aware as a child. And I've carried that with me over the years. Um, if, if I wasn't acting, I'd probably be in politics, probably. Same difference. Yeah. But um, <laughs> that's what I would love to do. I'd love to play the young, the young newbie senator. I would love to play, you know, the the um, frazzled county judge, you know, telling the old boys where to get off, you know, that kind of thing. That's what I would, I'm kind of lusting to do because it's deep in me to be that way. Anyway, I have a good model. My mom's very political, so. I would actually love right now, just because it's kind of in the forefront of my mind, um, Phoenix Song is actually based on a TV series I've been working on for the past three years or so. Um, it's and it it deals with the same concepts. Phoenix Song is actually at the heart of it is like a sizzle reel um, for the TV series. It it can stand on its own absolutely, but it's intended to give you an idea of the concepts, introduce you to the characters that are explored in the TV series. Um, Cinematic hors d'oeuvre. <laughs> there you go. Um, the it's actually called the Phoenix Chronicles, the TV show, and right now it's sort of one of those like. Um, what do they call them, like maxi series or something now? Yeah. Where it's it's sort of like a limited series. It's not like this the ones that like they drag out for five six seasons or whatever. Right now, I only have like two seasons in mind, um, just because like there's the only way the Brits do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. um, there's only so many past lives you can explore. <laughs> right. um, so, um, so that is something that's in the forefront of my mind right now in terms of projects I would love to do. I will fully confess that if, like, my fairy godmother came in right now and said, you can be whatever you want to be, and, you know, with my magic wand, I would say I would want to be an actress. Um, that's, you know, my deep-down passion. Um, I, I love, I love as a director exploring characters, but I love exploring them myself, too, you know. Um, that's just, you know, a part of who I am. Um but it's not a deal breaker necessarily. Um, I do love directing with an equal passion. Um, and like I said before, it, it's very conducive to my personality because I think if I was an actor, I would probably, <laughs> I would probably, I, I don't want to say take over, but I would 
be very assertive um, with what I envision things to be. Um, and some directors are open to that. I am as a director to a degree, um, but most people seem to just kind of fall in line anyway when I'm directing them. Um, for me, it's about balance because it's that right and that left brain. If you're creative all the time and you're there, uh, you know, for me, it's about me, you know, making sure I have one foot, you know, in the A leads to B and B leads to C and C leads to D and that's the end of our shooting day. That grounds me and that gives me something to chew on. That way when things in acting are, um, you know, you're always waiting on someone else when you're acting. You're waiting for your, to get, see if you're going to get an audition. You're waiting to see if you're going to get a call back. You wait six months for them to shoot it. You wait three months for them to edit it. Is it going to get in a festival? You're always kind of waiting. It's, it's waiting, waiting, waiting. Hurry up and wait. We want you here now, and then you're going to wait six months. So for me, producing gives me a place to, to go when I'm waiting and help me to feel creative. Kristen and I um, have a little creative collective called Phoenix Renovatus. Um, it's called that because it's kind of an offshoot of Phoenix Song. We started it with our cinematographer, Matthew Griffith, and two of our actors, Brittany Banks and Brandon Ruling, mm -hmm. um, all Phoenix Song alums. Mm -hmm. um, it means Phoenix renewed, so coming <laughs> up out of the ashes. Woo! Follow us on Facebook. Um, <laughs> And Twitter. And Twitter. Um, so it's it's just sort of um, a way for us to keep the creative juices flowing, to kind of recapture the experience we had on Phoenix Song of just, you know, we, we know how we work together. We work together well. We collaborate well. We all have great ideas, you know. Um, we have a shoot coming up within a couple weeks um, called Fifth Helena Drive. Don't want to give it away too much, but it's a short. It's a um, turn back time mystery thriller. Short. <laughs> there you go. See, she knows how to sell it. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so we're shooting that within a couple weeks. Um, and then after that, we're actually going to start shooting some scenes from her TV series called Sin and Sand. So she can talk more about that. Right. Sin and Sand is kind of like a mix of Dallas and Good Christian Bitches. And it is, it is a, a Texan soap opera. And we're looking forward to that very much. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to it because I get to she act. Gets to act. Ah! She gets to act. She gets to act. And we're actually, um, we have some great uh, film festival opportunities coming up in December. Cine West in Australia took Phoenix Song. So we should be hearing from them, hopefully. That's our international premiere. That is our international premiere. Yay! Thanks for joining us on The Real Show. Thanks for watching um, our creative collective, Phoenix Renovatus. You can find us on Facebook. Please like us. We have a lot of really awesome projects coming up. We update it all the time. We're also on Twitter, and our Twitter account is linked with our Facebook page. So anything we post on Facebook goes on Twitter as well. Um, but we're building our social presence at the moment. So jump on the bandwagon now, because we got some really cool stuff coming up. If you want to learn more about Phoenix Song, you can connect with us on Facebook. You can also connect with us on Twitter. For those of you who love the hashtag TBT, well, that is what Phoenix Song is. Turn back time. From Rococo to Rihanna, we've got it. Um, and then you can also hype us on Film Break, the newest digital media marketing platform where we are active members. You can check it out on Film Break. It's a great site. And we are very happy to have shared this all with you today. And thank you so much.